So, okay. Here we are. It says, human life can be viewed from two perspectives. It is either virtue or destruction. Amen. What is going on in your life? If it's not virtue, then it is problems. Amen. Amen. That's the way we look at it. Two perspectives. And when I look up the synonyms for virtue, these are the things that I saw. I saw morality. I saw goodness, integrity, uprightness, justice, probity, rectitude, and prudence. All of these are good attributes. When you are, I mean, when we, uh, at the perspective of your life reveals virtue. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to think along with me. This could be a little deep this morning. Amen. And on the other hand, the synonyms of destructions are, I mean, destruction are ruin, vandalism, desolation, devastation, and waste. When you look at all these, there's nothing good in this. And that is the perspective at which human life can be looked, you know, can be revealed. Amen. Either virtue or destruction. Praise the Lord. So it may sound strange, strange, but it is true that Satan has not created anything, but he uses freely what God has created. Hello? Are you with me? Yeah. I've not seen somebody that is said, oh, I'm being created by a devil or something. <laughs> Amen? But devil uses almost everything that God, you know, has created. Now, so the book of Job is the oldest book in the Bible and few people read it. Amen. Only few people. So in, in it, Job was described as a faithful and righteous man before the Lord and the greatest man in the East. <clears throat> I don't know how many people here, you know, just open to read the book of Job. It's not something you want to read. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's read a little bit of it. In Job chapter 1, from verse 7 through uh, 19, the Lord says to uh, Satan, where have you come from? And Satan answers the Lord, from roaming through the earth, going back and forth on it. Amen? Yeah. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Hallelujah. Yeah. So in verse 9, it says, does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied, Have you not put a hedge around him and his household uh, every, and, and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hand, so his flock and herds are spread throughout the land. 11. But now stretch out your hand and strike everything he has, and he will surely cost you to your face. Amen? Verse 12, the Lord said to Satan, very well, then, everything he has is in your power, but on, your, uh, but on the man himself, do not lay a finger. Then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Verse 13, one day when Job's sons and daughter were feasting and drinking wine 
at the oldest brother's house. A messenger came to Job and said, the oxen were plowing, the, uh, plowing and the donkeys were gray, grazing nearby. And the Serbian attacked and made a meal off with them. They put the servants to the sword, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. Are you following the story of the life of Job mm -hmm. and the conversation between God and Satan? Mm -hmm. Okay. Verse 16. Why he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, the fire of God fell from the heaven and burned up the sheep and the servant. And I am the only one, you know, who has escaped to tell you. 17, why he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, the child had formed three raining parties and swept down on your camels and made off with them. They put the servants to sword and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. 18, why he was speaking, yet another messenger came and said, your sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house, when suddenly a mighty wind swept, swept in from the desert and struck the four corners of the house. It collapsed on them, and they are dead. And I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's just look at this. Amen? What's your perspective of the, what could be going on in the life of, I mean, in the mind of Job at this time? Amen? He might be so depressed that he might be thinking of killing himself as well. Hallelujah. The Bible says that all this happened, you know, to him within a short period. In verses 7 and 8 of that scripture, the Bible says Satan moves, you know, to and fro. That tells us that Satan may not necessarily be able, you know, to be in one, I mean, in all the places all the time. The Bible says that flee for the devil, huh? I mean, uh, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Amen? But our God is everywhere, every time. Amen? Amen. Everywhere, every time. So in verse 12, the Bible says, The Lord said to Satan, Very well, then everything he has is in your power. But on the man himself, do not lay a finger. So Satan went out from the presence of God. So God placed the control of Job's household, huh? Job's household in the hand of Satan. But he has made, I mean, but he has he has to make use of things that God created as weapons to attack. Hallelujah. Amen. That was why I made the first statement that Satan has created nothing, but he freely make use of what God has created. Amen. And you can see from that story that at a point, you know, God uh, 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 gave the control of the life of, you know, I mean, the household of, uh, of Job to the devil. Hallelujah. So the first thing that we want to look at here is uh, the use of fire. Amen? Amen? Fire is said to be a combustion manifest by light and heat mm -hmm. and always very destructive when taken over by Satan. Amen? Amen? That is light. I mean, that is fire. But this is not all the attributes of fire. Amen. We will get to that. So here... In verse 16, 
while he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, the fire of God, amen, fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants. So it is not what Satan created, but what God himself created, the fire of God, amen? That's what the Bible says, came down from heaven. So that was to say that the fire of God, but Satan was in control at that point in time. Satan was in control. Amen. Amen. So you can see how Satan can take hold of something or someone and make use of them. In spite of the fact that, you know, this particular thing or person belongs to God. Hallelujah. Sometimes we want to see our enemy uh, in the next person to us, our, or our neighbor, or our friends. Us. But that does not mean uh, that they are your enemy. Hallelujah. Amen. Your enemy itself is, this, is, is Satan. But he has the ability of making use of anything any time against you. Hallelujah. Amen. Many of us, we are being, you know, uh, uh, confused from some of the things that we heard people say that somebody is responsible for your mystery or for what is going on in your life. That may not necessarily be the case. In fact, most of the times, it's the devil that just, you know, Attacking you. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So that's one point that now the same fire that we talk about uh, is the refining or purification, I mean purification of precious metals and symbolically for testing virtue. Amen. Mm -hmm. In First Corinthians, the Bible says. Their work will be shown for what it is because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. So you can see another use of fire there when it is not uh, in possession of Satan. Hallelujah. Amen. When it is not in possession of Satan. Not only that, in Malachi chapter 3 and verse 2, the Bible says, But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he will be like a refiner fire or a launderer's soul. Amen. Amen. So that tells you that that which we call fire, you know, can be used for good things. But when in, in the hand of the devil, uh, he uses it, you know, to snare your life, to destroy. Praise the Lord. So the same fire, the Bible says, Manifestation, you know, of God's sometimes accompanied with the same fire. That is, manifestations of God sometimes accompany with that same fire. In Exodus chapter 13 and verse 22, the Bible says, Neither the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night left, you know, its place in front of his people. You remember that story? When the children of Israel were, you know, in the desert, trying to reach their land of Canaan, hallelujah, mm -hmm. the same fire of God served as a protection for them, hallelujah, mm -hmm. and it is the same fire that destroys everything that Job possessed. Amen? Amen. Okay, <laughs> let's move on. 
The same fire, you know, symbolizes providence of God. Providence of God. In Luke chapter 3 and verse 16, the Bible says, John answered, answered them all, I baptized you with, a, uh, with water, but one who is more powerful than, than I will come. The straps of old sander are not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire. Amen. Amen. So I'm just making it clear to us that God created fire, but the devil can make use of it. Hallelujah. Yeah. And it could be anything and anybody. Praise the Lord. It could be your boss. And it could be any, just anything or anybody. Hallelujah. So it is also associated with the Holy Spirit, as you can see from the previous scripture. It says, in Acts chapter 2, it says, they saw what seems to be uh, tongues of fire uh, that separated uh, that separated and came to rest on each of them. That is the time that the, the, uh, the disciples received uh, uh, the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit. That's the picture of what happened then. Amen? Amen. The same fire was prepared uh, to roast a life sacred Mazak and a bed nigo. Amen? Amen. Are you getting the point now? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us talk about wind. In Job chapter 1, verse 18 and 19, the Bible says, Why he was still speaking, yet another messenger came and said, your sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house. When suddenly a mighty wind swept in front, I mean, in from the desert and struck the four corners of the house. It collapsed on them, huh? and they are all dead. The wind. Amen? Mm -hmm. The wind did that. The wind itself to be, I mean, the east and not wind brings rain and it's very important in Palestine. But west and south wind bring, you know, dryness. Amen. In Nigeria, there is a particular time of the year that the north east wind blows in. And that's when we have the Amatan. Hallelujah. Amatan is a very cold chilly, you know, period of the year. And it happens around, you know, November, December, you know, kind of, I don't know how it happens in other countries. Hallelujah. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Around November, December, kind of a thing, there's Amatan. And it's as a result of the wind that blows from the Northeast. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So nevertheless, uh, Satan can as well take control of wind to cause havoc. Amen? Amen? To cause havoc. Winds are often used because of the seemingly uh, immaterial nature as a symbol of the spiritual nature of God and the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. And in Acts of Apostles, Chapter 2 and verse 2, the Bible says, suddenly it sounds like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled, you know, the house, uh, the, the whole house where they were sitting. Amen. That's the wind. There. Praise the Lord. And it's the same wind that destroys. Amen. It depends. In Luke, 
I think it's Luke chapter 22, verse, tw verse 2. The Bible was talking about uh, 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 Judas is carried. And the Bible says, and when Satan entered into Judas Iscariot, he went and betrayed Jesus. Hallelujah. And this guy happened to be an apostle. The one taking, I mean, taking hold of the pulse, the wallet, amen, of the team. And that happened. Amen. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 9 and 10. The Bible says, Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the sovereign Lord says Come, breathe from the uh, breath from the four wings of and breath into these slain and they may live. So verse 10, he says, so I prophesy as he commanded me and bread entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. You remember, you know, that is in Ezekiel when the Lord said that, you know, he, he can turn anything, you know, that is dead into life. And it happened by the use of wind. Amen. By the use of wind. It happened. That same wind that blew up the house and destroyed, you know, the first generation of Job. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Satan took control of the body and caused damages on it to torment Job. Such will not necessarily affect the spirit. And in verse uh, chapter 2 and verse 7, the Bible says, So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and afflicted Job with painful sores from the soles, uh, the soles of his feet to the crown of his head. Amen. So bodies can be taken over. There's no one that is dead uh, that I've heard of or seen, you know, that most, uh, most people, they will say that, oh, something killed the person, except they didn't do the autopsy. Hallelujah. There's always something responsible except, you know, the autopsy is not done. It is possible that Satan takes control. Amen. Amen. Takes control. All these names that we are hearing of, they are not from God. Amen. Amen. Also, Satan took control of the mind. Amen? So, Satan can take control of our minds as well. Because before you do something, it comes first to your mind. Hallelujah. It first comes to your mind. And this is what happened here. When Satan took control of the, uh, 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 of the mind of uh, Job's wife and made her to snare Job. What happened in Job chapter 2, verse 9? It says, His wife says to him, Are you still maintaining your integrity? Cause God and I. Hallelujah. Cause God and I. Ecclesiastes says, uh, Sorry. Ecclesiastes says that. I find more bitter than death the woman who is a snare, whose heart is a trap, and whose hand are chains. Hallelujah. 
So some situations that you find yourself at times, who is responsible? The Bible says God is not the author of confusion. Hallelujah. So who will be using the heart, I mean the mind at that moment? That's how we need to watch us, I mean, uh, look at ourselves from that perspective. Sometimes, you may not know. In fact, we don't even want to agree that we are wrong. Most of the times, it's difficult to agree that you are wrong. Because at that moment, this could be happening. The heart has been hijacked, the mind. Hallelujah. Job had some friends, very close ones. Hallelujah. They were so there and close to him. Capable of giving good advice, you know, but would such be what's in the mind of God for Job? The situation was so critical. This is a very close friend that is going through this. So let's get to him. So in verse 11 and 13, the Bible says, when Job's three friends, uh, Edibus, the, uh, the Terminites, Bildad, the Shuhites, and Sova, uh, the Namitites, heard about all the trouble that had come upon him, they set out you know, from their homes and met together uh, by agreement to go and sympathize with him and comfort him. Hallelujah. And comfort Job. So it goes further. When they saw him from a distance, they could hardly recognize him. They began to weep aloud and they tore their robes. And sprinkled dust on their on their head. Then they sat on the ground with him for seven days and seven nights. No one said a word to him because they saw how great his suffering was. Hallelujah! Are you hearing the, that the story? They sympathize with him. They love him, right? They love him. If they can sit, you know, they saw him from distance. Though they can't recognize him because of the devastation. Hallelujah. And they sat with him for seven days. They did not even say a word. But they spoke eventually. And let us hear what they say. Because when you are going through certain situations, huh, people's perspective of what is happening in your life differs. But that may not be what is in the mind of God concerning you. Hallelujah. You see, this is more or less like a lesson for us. Amen. The first friend, this is what he said to Job. He says, how can this happen to you if you had not messed up and sinned against God? Hello? Hi. Did you see what I'm saying there? Oh, holy die, holy uh, only the, the now, right? Yeah. Why would such a thing happen to you? Aren't you a child of God? Aren't you a believer? We are talking about the sovereignty of God. Amen. Amen. And we are using the case study of the life of Job. So the friend said, oh, my friend, why would this happen to you? Amen. Mm -hmm. And in verse 7 and 9 through 9 of chapter 4, it says, Consider now who is been innocent as ever as ever perished. Hello? Did you hear what I just read? That's what the friend is saying. Consider now huh, who been innocent as ever perished. Where were the uprights ever destroyed? 
as I have observed, those who plow evil and those who sow trouble reap it. At the breath of God, they perish. At the blast of his anger, they are no more. So what is happening to you must have been your own making. Hello? Are you getting it now? Amen. So you must be responsible. These are the consequences of your, huh? of your own doing. Your sins. Praise the Lord. That could be somebody's perspective about your life. Amen. The second friend, this is what he came up with. He tried to persuade Job to admit that he's guilty. Hello? You better accept that you are, you are wrong. And maybe God can have mercy on you. In verse 8, uh, uh, chapter 8, 3 through 6, this is what he says. He says, does God pervert justice? Does the Almighty pervert what is right? When your children sin against him, he gave them over to the penalty of their sin. That's what the second friend said. Why don't you just, you know, confess your sin and admit that you are guilty? Do you think God perverts justice? Your children receive what they deserved because they sin against God. Hallelujah. But did they actually sin? Praise the Lord from the narrative. Did they actually sin? That wasn't the case. Hallelujah. But why? But if you seek God earnestly and plead with the Almighty, if you appeal and upright, even now, He will. Rouse, uh, rouse himself on your behalf and restore you to your previous stage. So therefore, admit, you know, that you are guilty. Guilty. That's the second friend. Are you seeing the perspective at which people can be judging you or looking at, at your life? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. The third friend told Job to stop pretending. Stop pretending about this holiness and righteousness. It's all self acclaimed. Amen. Stop pretending. Hallelujah. You're going to church all this while and you're still having all this heap of trouble. You call yourself Christian and these terrible things are happening. Stop pretending you are not a believer. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what they can probably say about you. Amen. And in Job chapter 15, 14 through 16, it says, What are mortals that they could be pure, or those born of women that they could be righteous? If God places no trust in his holy ones, if even the heavens are not pure in his eyes, how much, how much less? Mother who are vile and corrupt, who drink up evil like water. Amen? Amen. That you are pretending that you are not a sinner. You are pretending that you are serving God. And look at everything that is happening in your life. All you have worked for just disappeared 
overnight. Your children, and look at you, you are sick with sores all over your body. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you hearing me this morning? The sovereignty of God. The sovereignty of God. Go reply through the storm. Amen. Amen. Through the storm, God comforted Job. And he said, God spoke to Job through the same sudden storm of the Sea of Galilee, still by Jesus during crossing. You remember this story? Hallelujah. Amen. In John chapter 6, you know, a strong wind was blowing and the water grew rough. When they had rolled about three or four miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on water, and they were frightened. Hallelujah. Amen. There was storm there. Now, it says, the same storm, excuse me, the same storm that caused Paul's ship to wreck on the island of Malta. It is the same storm that God has spoken through uh, to comfort uh, 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 Job. We will get there. Amen? Amen. We will get there. How God comforts, you know, uh, comforted him. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, <clears throat> in Acts of the Apostle, we see this. It says the ship was caught by the storm and could not head into the wind. So we gave way to it and were driven along. As we, part, as we passed uh, to the lee of a small island called Calder, we were hardly able to make uh, uh, the lifeboat secured when neither sun nor star appeared for many days and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up our hope of being saved. You remember that story? How, you know, Paul had a shipwreck at the island of uh, called Malta. That is somewhere south of Italy. Hallelujah. Amen. The same storm that can cause havoc, God used it as a comforter for Job. Hallelujah. Let's get back. God replied through storm. Through the storm, God comforted Job and declared his sovereignty. And this is what God has to say. In fact, I want to uh, suggest that you read the entire chapter. Amen? The entire chapter. It talks about the sovereignty of God. In chapter 38, he says, then the Lord spoke, spoke to Job out of the storm. He said, who is this that obscures my plan with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth, the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Where were you? When I laid the heart foundation. Hallelujah. That is God that is speaking that. It goes further. It says, who, uh, it says, who mark off the dimension? Surely you know. Because you think you know everything. Hello? Because you think you are bad. You think you are part of all this. I do what pleases me. I am God and that is who I am. Who among you, who knows? Amen. The sovereignty of God. It goes further. It says, who stretched a, measure, a, a measuring line across it? On what? What is uh, footing set or who laid its cornerstone? Was anybody there when he did it? 
Praise the Lord. So at times we don't have control over what is happening in our lives. Though people may have different perspectives and they may want to judge you or say anything about you. But they weren't there. They weren't there when God created you. They weren't there when God packaged your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want you to read the entire chapter. How could you just put them up here? Chapter 38. God declared his sovereignty. I do what I want to do. Amen. Amen. Then God came back and rebuked the friends. Amen. Amen. He rebuked the friends. And this is what he had to say. After the Lord has said those uh, these things to Joel, he said to Edivus, the town, I am hungry with you and your two friends because you have not spoken the truth about me as my servant Job has. Verse 8. So you know, I mean, so now take seven bulls and seven rams and go to my servant Job and sacrifice uh, 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 a bond offering for yourselves. My servant Job will pray for you and I will accept his prayer and not deal with you. According to your you know, fully, you have not spoken the truth about me as my servant Job has. Amen. Amen. Are you getting it now? Hallelujah. He rebuked the friends. He rebuked the friends. So, no matter what you are currently experiencing, as long as you continue to stand in his presence, in worship and in service, know that God is in control of your life. He is in charge of all operations. Amen. Amen. He's in charge of all operations. No matter what. No matter what. Just stand. Just stand. This is a sign of, you know, I, 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 I believe in God. Amen. Amen. Believe in God. Even when you are in fire, know that God controls the thermostat. Amen? Amen. He regulates it to, uh, to the point that you can endure. Because he says in 1 Corinthians, he says, no temptation has ever taken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can be. He controls the thermostats. Amen. Amen. It could be that he just wanted you to go through them. Amen. Amen. Just to go through them. To promote you. To lift you up. Hallelujah. Amen. So you can't blame God. Because you weren't there. Hallelujah. Amen. He is sovereign God. He says, I will have mercy on those that I have mercy. I will have compassion on those that I will have compassion. That is God. Sovereignty. Hallelujah. Amen. In Romans chapter 9, 10 through 13, the Bible says, not only that, but Rebecca's children were conceived, you know, at the same time by our father Isaac. Yet, before the twins, you know, were born or had done anything good or bad, in order 
that God's purpose, God's purpose, amen, in election, uh, in election might stand not by words, but by him who calls. He said, I mean, she, she was told, the older will serve the younger, just as it is written, Jacob I love, but Esau I hated. Amen. That's the mystery. It's a mystery. Even before they were born, God was saying that, you know, the whole will serve the young. Jacob I love, but Esau I hate it. Amen. The sovereignty of God. Praise the Lord. The sovereignty of God. God bless Job. Huh? The Bible says, the Bible talks about the beauty of his new daughters. Because after everything, huh? God turned around things for Job. New wives. Amen? Amen. New children. New blessing. Amen. Things get us rosy again in his life. Praise the Lord. Amen. That is what God can do. Amen. 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 It's only God that can do that. In Job chapter 42, and verse, verses 10 and 15, after Job had prayed for his friend, the Lord restored his fortune and gave him twice as much as he had before. How about that? Twice. Then, now in 15, I mean, no, uh, nowhere in all the land were there found women as beautiful as Job's daughters. And their father granted them an inheritance, you know, along with their brothers. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It turns life around. And it's, it's, it does, it does it's even now. Amen. That's what it does. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 140 years was added to Job's age. After this, the Bible says, Job lived 140 years. He saw his children and their children to the fourth generation. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Am I still changing the slide or is that the last no. one there? That's the last one there. Hallelujah. Amen. You can see how God changed the life of you know Job all around. Amen. Amen. So what are people thinking about you may not necessarily be, be true. God might be walking. In your life. Amen. Amen. So don't stop giving thanks to him. Don't stop appreciating him. Never think of, you know, quitting. Never think of quitting. No matter what. He loves you. Your hand is in his hands. Hallelujah. Can the church rise up?